What are we looking at? <laughs> Check this out. Crazy, huh? Get a close look. What's going on here? And just in case you're wondering, <laughs> this is the Shoki tuning slide that I took out. It's also a reversed uh, lead pipe, but it's much smaller bore and would not fit in the configuration of the V-Wrapper. In case you're wondering why I didn't just use the Shoki, uh, it was too small. It wouldn't go over into the, to the pipes on the V-Wrapper, so I had to use the V-Wrapper reverse tuning slide. Okay, many of you have recently seen my demo video for the Schilke uh, B6B 1982 Bill Chase Beryllium Bell model horn, vintage. Um, and I got it because I really wanted it. I really thought that the Beryllium Bell was going to be the just the miracle pill and the holy grail of all trumpets for me uh, based on what I like to do. And as you know from my demo, I, I told you that it kind of stopped up on me because I'm so used to playing on this guy, which is um, a much larger bore. Both of these horns are multi-bore or step-bore horns, meaning they start off at a certain configuration and they expand gradually until they get to the bell of the horn. So, um, uh, or, or maybe they go in reverse, but... What's interesting to note is that uh, I was playing, I was just trying trying to fool around with this before I sold it. And I, now here's the irony. I actually figured out that I now want the Shilke, but not as in its standard form, but I have to make some modifications, but I sold it. <laughs> so I only had it up for sale for four or five days and it sold. So I'm actually, Today is, uh, what is today? Tuesday, June 4th, and I actually have to pack it up when I get done with this video. That's why I thought I would make this video. I have to pack it up and ship it out priority to a, a, a well-deserving comeback player that I've never um, known or met. I mean, he's not a student of mine, uh, but uh, he did approach me and he wanted to get the horn. So um, I got to send it to him, honor my commitment. But I was thinking about keeping it after I did this experiment. What I have is, if you look carefully, I have the lead pipe of the V-Raptor, which certainly must be quite a lot larger. I don't know if it starts out at 0.468 or it starts off smaller and it gets larger, but I have it connected up to the Shoki, uh, the Shoki B6B. Can you see that? It's basically the tuning, it's basically the lead pipe, my, my normal mouthpiece, the lead pipe and the reverse tuning slide of the V-Raptor going into the, uh, well, where, where the tuning slide would normally go into any horn on the, on the third valve slide. See that? And what I, I just, I don't even know why I got this idea, folks. Can't really tell you why. I just thought it kind of bugged me. Um, uh, went back and listened to Bill Chase and how he, his sound was just so rich, so brassy, so, um, thick with luscious sound. And even in the upper register with lots of gorgeous overtones, I thought, how come I'm not getting that, even though I'm playing the same horn, horn that he is? And yeah, it might be because I'm used to blowing on the larger bore horn. So what I did was an experiment that totally blew me away. And this is what actually made me want to keep the horn. So uh, I'm going to help, go ahead and honor my commitment to send this off today. So I have to say goodbye to the Shoki, this vintage. And Lord knows what I'll be able to come up upon another one of these, but I'm going to be looking. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that there was a 30 or 40 percent marked increase in my intonation, my sound, the core, uh, resonance of the horn, the efficiency, the output, the ease of the upper register. My, uh, I was able to even play much louder, but with a better tone. And when I put in my Bach 1C, you know, that's the largest Bach trumpet mouthpiece of all. Uh, all of a sudden, I got this huge, deep, big, wide, warm sound, and I'll show you that. So anyway, I, I'm going to do this quick because I have to pack this up and get it out priority mail today to this gentleman. So um, now I'm not really all that warmed up, and also I got to play left-handed. So I'm blowing into this. I don't know if you can tell. I'm blowing into the V-Raptor. But it's coming out of the Shoki. I gotta play left-handed.
So let me just play a few notes for you. And it may not be perfectly in tune based on this kind of screwy um, um, configuration. Now I won't be playing anything out of the V Raptor as far as the valves because it's all going through this horn here. It, it is a wacky setup, but let me see what I can do here. Um, you might just notice my sound is very uh, big and compact, yet uh, has a nice core resonance to it. nothing like that on the V-Raptor. The V-Raptor has lots of error in it. Um, the, the intonation is a little bit shaky, but the Shilky Brilliant Bell is lighting up, folks. And uh, I have no idea. No, I played um, Invitation to a River with Bill Chase, and I'm not going to do that today. I have the music in front of me, and I, I've already gone through it a little bit. I just noticed that it just sounds better. Now, I might make a few mistakes because, uh, look, this is a weird configuration to try to play on, especially <laughs> something difficult like this. But let me just try a little bit of it. And I'm playing left-handed. So, But you should notice, even if there's a couple bobbles and wobbles, that the sound is 30 or 40% improved over the V-Raptor. Let me just play a couple notes here. I'm going to be starting off at the beginning of the uh, Invitation to River. There we go. sounds better already just like that let me keep going I'm actually warming up as we're doing this so hold on let the blood flow back to my lips Everything came in good. Now my break on most horns is the G, and so usually I have to take you know a week or two to get used to a new horn to figure out how to center that G in. But you should have noticed that just about every other note is coming in much better. The E's. On this Shilky with the V-Raptor lead pipe, it is bigger, louder, more in tune, more focused, and I'm still playing it one and two. Let me, that's how I had to do it on the V-Raptor. Let me just try it open. Good. Let's see if we can get the G to center in a little bit better. Once I get past my break, the uh, double A should center in a lot better than the G did. Let's just try it. <laughs> Folks, can you hear what I'm talking about? Uh, now you know the G is where my break is, which is one of the worst places to have a break. But usually I can um, compensate for that once I get to know the horn. So, um, did you notice that the double A came in like about a thousand times percent better than the double G? Because uh, I'm over my break, and you can hear the combination of playing on this huge tapered lead pipe of the V Raptor, and it's actually going through uh, the smaller uh, bore of the Shilky B6B. 
But that beryllium bell, now this is the real beryllium that they don't make now. That's why I really wanted, that's why I was searching for this horn. You know, I'm not going to go out and spend a thousand dollars more, which, you know, you can spend around thirty-six to thirty-eight hundred dollars for a new um, Shoki B6B. You're not getting the real beryllium. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but you're not. So I'm not going to go out and spend another thousand or fifteen hundred dollars more for a new one, which I could do right now and not have the same quality of sound coming through the bell. So anyway, this is amazing. I hope that you heard the difference in my sound. Um, so I'm not going to go over the break again because uh, it, the break is a little bit squirt. Well, let me do it one more time. That break, that G. Even after doing this just a couple of times, you saw that I started to get that uh, double G on the brake centered. It had some sizzle. But when I went up to the double C, I don't have that kind of sizzle happening on the V Raptor. That double C on the Shoki Brilliant Bell is sparkling. It's like electric plug is put into it. Let's do it again. Let us do a C here. Probably one of the loudest double C's I've ever played in my entire life. Um, I need to get my decibel meter out. But the thing that you guys probably can't hear is how gorgeous the sparkle and the overtones are just all lit up. I mean, I can almost see all the colors floating around the room. It really is something else. Um, anyway, I'm kind of sad because I I don't even know why I thought to do this. It's crazy, right? I just he just kept bugging me about this damn Shulky, knowing that it's got to play, it's got to light up. And uh, I thought, well, maybe it, the lead pipe, I'm used to playing on a much bigger bore. Maybe if I tried that and somehow configured it into the Shulky and got to take advantage of this brilliant bell, maybe something would happen. And I was right. Um, okay, now let me see if I can take out my main mouthpiece without damaging the Shulky. And throw in my, hold on a second, throw in the um, one. Okay, so now I got the Bach one. And you're going to notice now even yet a, another difference. So I got the Bach uh, one, not one C, the Bach one. It's cold. Hold on a second. Let me just play a couple notes on that and you're going to notice that the sound is much bigger and warmer than when I, tip, when I typically play the one on the V-Raptor. I can just feel the whole horn vibrating, not this, this. The third valve slide is out like two inches. Let me pull that back in. That's why it's not coming in tune. Now let's try it. There we go. I really hate to let this go because um, my idea was to either go to some of these custom manufacturers of lead pipes. Um, some of them that I've seen online, you got the Pilchik lead, lead pipe, you got the Pickett Blackburn lead pipe, you got what's another the other guy that does a lot of them, MK drawings. Uh, I was either going to use the V Raptor lead pipe, take it off, 
take off the, the lead pipe here of the Shoki and put the v, v Raptor lead pipe on this and see how that played out. And then if it worked out good, I would get the V Raptor lead pipe silver plated. And I'd have my dream horn right here, a horn that could light up upstairs. Or if I put a Bach 1 in it, it could just darken up and get big. And um, if you just let off the gas pedal, you get a much richer, darker, a bigger, softer, warmer sound. Uh, but so that's going to have to be put on hold. <laughs> that's going to be have to be put on hold. I'm going to have to do another research now for the Shoki. These are hard to find. And if you were looking at this and you didn't take action, um, you, should, you should go ahead and kick yourself because uh, this was a one of a kind horn. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find another one like this, but I'm going to try so I can do this experiment of taking off the Shoki leak pipe here and putting it on the bigger one or having one of these guys that I just mentioned uh, make me a leak pipe that is similar to the, the V Raptor here, uh, but a much larger one. So anyway, I'm kind of sad to see this go. Let's make sure everything's... My low G never sounds like that on the V Raptor. Listen to that. This V Rapper does not play like this. Anyway, I'm Kurt Thompson. I hope you enjoyed seeing how my brain works. And it works like this. <laughs> a little bit quirky, right? <laughs> but I tell you what, I got a horn that can play a low G. It centers, it's big, it's dark, it's warm. I don't get that on the V-Raptor, no matter what I do. So I'm going to still keep pursuing my quest for finding the perfect combination for me for what I like to do. And I hope that maybe this has sparked something in your brain as to the pop possibilities of thinking outside the box. So this is what happens when you think for yourself and you don't worry about other people's feelings and other people's opinions. Think for yourself and don't worry about what some Joe Blow thinks about you and how you do things. When you operate that way, you come up with an amazing creativity in your life, just like you're seeing right here. I hope you enjoy this. You will see me at some point with my dream horn. I'm still working on it, but for right now, I got to settle for this broken down V Raptor and it, it, it really is just falling apart. <laughs> I mean, it really is. And it doesn't do me any justice upstairs. It doesn't do me any justice downstairs as far as tone quality and intonation. It just, I got to get out of this V Raptor so I can keep advancing my plane and my sound. I'm Kurt Thompson, and I will catch you in the next one, my friends. Bye-bye.